Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Next Goal Wins. Leicester have just drawn 1-0 with Aston Villa and this is going to be a no holds barred review because I think there's a few things that have to be said in this after that display. Now when you go 1-0 up against Villa you should be winning the game, end of. They aren't a good enough team to get back into it and especially when you have a chance to get a penalty to go 2-0 up you have to convert that penalty. Now I'll quickly talk about the first half of this game then. So what happened was we went into the game, the first 20 minutes were pretty turgid, not a lot happened, a lot of ball bobbling around the box, but we do get a goal, a long ball forward from Kasper Schmeichel, catches out the whole of the Villa defence, Vardy running in behind, goes for a lovely outside of a right foot effort lob over the oncoming goalkeeper, Keeper saves it, but Okazaki's run a long, long way to get there, to put the ball over the line. Goal line technology manages to prove it, saved by Bun, but it didn't matter eventually because the goal was given. And Okazaki, I'm just going to talk about having had a great game and was really, really harshly taken off. Um, after that, then the big moment in the game happened. We won a penalty. The ball kind of bobbled around from a throw in. Okazaki kind of finds Vardy in the box, runs left footed, crosses it far post for, for Mares. Mares has a shot, blocked by Ali Sissoko, hand in his face like that. Was it a penalty? Wasn't a penalty? It doesn't really matter to me. We got the penalty. And now this is where for me it gets really annoying and I'm going to start to vent. And if people don't really think it's appropriate venting because we're top of the league and whatever, I, I support my team till the dying day and that's why I get annoyed. Now, let's talk about this. This, this game and this penalty and what happened after it then. So, for the first thing, Mares steps up to take it. Now, Mares has, hasn't been the same player since our Bournemouth game. Since he missed that penalty, his confidence has been at an all-time low. He hasn't even looked like making an impact on the game, and this was no difference. So why are we letting him take a penalty? The player with no confidence, why are we letting him step up to take the penalty? I don't get it at all. I don't get why he's been put on responsibility of taking a penalty, a massive penalty to put the game to bed because Villa aren't going to score two against us. There's no chance Villa are going to score two against us. So why give it to, to Mares, who has not been playing well in the game? I hate it when people give players penalties who aren't on form. I get he'd only miss one and it's almost a redemption for him to, you know, if he scores this penalty then... He's back in form. But for me, Vardy had been playing well in the first half. Let him have the penalty. He kind of set up the penalty. He, you know, he needs confidence as well. Hasn't scored in a long time. He's our centre forward. He's the one who scores goals for us. Let Vardy take it. He has a no-nonsense run up for moments like that. Bournemouth game, last minute to get a point. Scored. Goal against uh, Watford at home to win. Scored. Uh, you know what I mean? He scores vital penalties. He runs up, puts them in. So for me, Vardy had to take it. Mares steps up, wanders towards it like he's having a little stroll in the park on a Sunday morning with his dog. Not really bothered. Terrible penalty. Worst penalty I've seen in a long time. Straight down the middle. Keeper dives and still manages to save it, which is how oh, you know it's a crap penalty. About a, a foot off the, off the ground, not even high into the roof of the net. Terrible penalty. Didn't look bothered, and that's all because of confidence. He's got no confidence at the moment, and that's what happens from it. Villa did score late on in the game, as I'm sure you all know, because it finished 1 0. They scored, the goal was coming, the whole second half we were, it was the worst half of football we've played this season. They got in behind us, and it was handball by Gestead. He won it kind of on the edge of a box. It flicks up, hits his left arm, bounces back to his feet. Hoof has a joke of an attempt at a clearance. Ben falls back for him. He has a shot, Gestead. Hits Morgan, deflected. Schmeichel would have saved it, but goes and flies past Schmeichel. 1-0. Game finishes in the 90th minute. 1-0. We go away with a point. We go back to the top of the table on our own. Stay out of Man City. But this is why I'm going to talk about in this video is... The players, I don't think, are playing well enough at the moment and what we need to change if we really want to do something kind of in the next few games. Now, there's three players in this game who were unbelievably poor, maybe even four. The three players are Mark Albright and Danny Drinkwater, Riyad Mahrez and Robert Hoof. Now, Hoof should have given away a penalty for an arm around the face of a Villa player in the box. Did a terrible clearance in the first few minutes which led to a chance for them where he shanked at a... A, a, kind of a, a pass back to a goalkeeper attempt. It's, it did headers, multiple headers out of play. That clearance for the goal. Hoof had an absolutely shambolic performance. And the other three, though, were worse for me. Mares, I've said time and time and time and time and time again. When he's good, when he is good, he is our best player on the pitch by a country mile. But when he is bad, he's the worst player on the pitch by a country mile. He's atrocious when he's bad. He's going for a spell at the moment. He's got no confidence. He hasn't done anything in a while. No, nothing of impact. And this game summed it up for me. 
didn't look like he was ever going to recreate anything, missed the penalty, and in the second half, had loads of chances, one to set through Vardy, a massively overhit ball with his right foot, terrible pass, and he was an absolute abysmal performance from Maris, well below the levels we expect from him. I mean, Mark Albright now, for look back at my reviews of all the, the last four or five games, I'm sure he's averaging about a two for his rating because he's been so poor for a few weeks. Uh, and this game, he was absolutely abysmal again. Gave the ball away every time. Needless, stupid, give him the ball away. And all we have to do is keep the ball under control. And he gave it away. And I know I'm being critical because I know we're top of the league. And I know it's an amazing season. And that's why I'm being critical. Because I think we have a real possibility of finishing top four. We should be beating Villa if we have if we want to get top four. I know the position we're in. And it's not like I, I hate on players because I think it's fun or enjoyable. And especially after a point. But at times it has to be done. The other man is Danny Drinkwater. And for me, Drinkwater has to be the most overrated Premier League player of this season. Because Leicester are doing well, and because he's English, you hear all these pundits who never watch Leicester say Drinkwater's been outstanding this season, he's been phenomenal this season. People who watch my reviews will know, I don't think that. I think he's had very good games. I think Swansea away, he was brilliant. There have been a few games at home where I think he's been very good. And especially, he's stepped up massively from last year to this year. He's become more of a Premier League player. But... Not a top four Premier League player, not at all. For he gives the ball away, needless situations. He's too weak on the ball. We need someone in the middle of a park who can control games, who can win a challenge and control it. And Golo Conte is that man for us. But you need someone alongside him who offers something different. Drinkwater hasn't scored in the Premier League. He's been there a season and a half now. He hasn't scored. He's had chances to score. He had a massive chance today. He was played in in the box, tried a stupid little Ibrahimovic flick. When all he had to do was side foot it, don't know what he was doing. He's had chances to score and he hasn't scored in the Premier League for us in a year and a half. And, uh, I mean, that's something that we need in our game, a goal-scoring midfielder, because the goals aren't coming from other places. We scored with a striker today from a long ball. When we played the ball on the floor, we looked dangerous. Damari Gray, Gray came on for the last five, ten minutes. He ran at players. He looked dangerous. Mares, though, like I said, when he's his best, he's the best. When he's at his worst, he's the worst. Now, drink water for me, there's a famous baseball quote that you always pick. If there's two players who are scoring the, the same amount of goals, let's say, getting the same amount of assists, and etc., etc., but one of them's on really good form and one of them's on really bad form. Which one do you pick to buy in the transfer window? And you always pick the one who's on bad form because imagine what they could be if you get them on good form. Now, Drinkwater and these players, I think, had an amazing form at the start of the season. Vardy had an incredible form at the start of the season. Mares, incredible form at the start of the season. And they're not, they're not achieving that form at the moment. That's what it simply comes down to. They're not achieving that form that... In a way, we've become accustomed to, and I feel almost like a United fan or a Chelsea fan or a Liverpool fan must feel when their team don't perform kind of how they expect, because you become accustomed to these these uh, virtuoso performances from people like Vardy and Mares to save you from games and to keep you going in games and to do something to keep you in games, and they haven't done for a while, and we've struggled. We drew against Villa today, have got 11 points in the league, yes? I know they beat Palace, and I know it's a point that's not too bad, but we were winning this game. There was no chance for them to get back into it if we'd have scored that penalty. No chance for them to get back into it. So why we let the penalty taker be a man with low confidence beggars belief. I think Villa was shambolic today. I don't think they're a good team. I don't think they're going to stay up. They've got nothing really in their team, and I know Villa fans can hate on me if you want for saying that because you drew against us, but I think we were shambolic today as well. I don't think... If that's the best you've played in a while, I don't know because I don't watch you that regularly, but you were poor today, I thought. Lucky with your goal, a handball. Maybe you should have had a penalty for a hoof one, obviously. But, you know, everything is swings around about in football and you get what you deserve. And today, we didn't deserve to win that game because my dad turned to me and I turned to him at one point and said, this is, do you know what I mean, top four. We're going for top four and this is how we're playing. That second half, we were abysmal. And... Now, Ranieri, I've stuck by him all season. Obviously, he's made brilliant decisions every single game. That's why we are where we are. But today, he's made the first decision that I've really disagreed with. That was taking off Shinji Okazaki and bringing on Richie Delat. Now, he did that because Mares wasn't defending where he was meant to be. But, for me, Mares wasn't doing anything. And Mares got taken off five, ten minutes later for Leonardo Ojoa. Now, Okazaki was completely different. Okazaki was having one of his better games for us. He looked... Comfortable on the ball, was holding the ball up well, had scored a goal, was bringing people into play, was doing something effective. Mares wasn't. And it's because Mares has that potential to do something, but he doesn't when he's playing badly. When he's playing well, yes, he has that potential, but he doesn't. And I don't know what we can do to get him back into form and back into the groove because he's been out of it for so long. 
Albrighton the same, Drinkwater the same, and Hoof, I mean, Hoof was poor in this game, kind of his worst performance for a long, long time for us. Morgan, I think, had a good game. I thought Fuchs played well. Simpson didn't do too badly. Schmeichel did all right. Okazaki, like I said, played well. Conte played excellently for me. I've given Okazaki man of a match because I feel like he was unfairly hooked, but Conte could easily have got man of a match despite a terrible pass at the end which gave the ball away. And I know we're nagging and being niggly and nitpicking at things, and I know there'll be a lot of people who watch this video who will say, oh, you know, just let up on them. You know, we're top of the league. These are the good times, you know, we're not going to have times like this again, and I completely understand that, believe me, I'm Leicester City through and through, and that's why when I don't like what I see on the pitch, I criticise it, because I don't think that makes me any less of a fan, criticising the players, or having a go at the players, I think sometimes that's what needs to be done, you do it with England, so why not do it with your own club side, and there were players who underperformed massively today, because Villa weren't a good side, and they were there for the taking today, and to not come away with three points after leading is a massive, massive disappointment to me, and I'm sure Claudio Ranieri will feel the same, despite what he says in the, to the press, or what he says to the players, I'm sure him and the players will feel Desperately disappointed to not come home with a, what could have been a valuable three points. Obviously, beating Tottenham in in in, in the, the kind of the last few days has made up for that because the Tottenham result getting three points there was unexpected and kind of picking up a point here is better and so. But now we've got five points out of a possible nine towards this forty point total we want to get. So not the worst, but not the best. And we are going through a really bad run of form at the moment. You look at our results. We've drawn well, lost, drawn two, won one and drawn again, so if this is our bad run of the season, which it looks like it's definitely going to be, our players are massively out of form, and it's something that happens to every team, this is our drop-off, and luckily for us, it hasn't been significant yet, touch wood, wherever there is wood around you, it hasn't been significant yet, it hasn't mattered that these players haven't been on top form, because somehow or somewhere we've managed to get a result and today against Villa we managed to get a point which could easily have been no points but as I've said they were there for the taking it was there for us to win and a side like Arsenal would come there and boss the game and when we went 1-0 up we in the second half I don't know why we brought Delat on it was as if we were kind of thinking you know let's just go for 1-0 one -nil now 1-0 one is a good result we'll get the win and Ranieri thought we've kept a few clean sheets in a row I'm Italian manager, I can, I can, you know, get a team stable and set up, but you can't account for deflections like that and look at the, the, the ball when it hit his hand. Obviously, the ref probably didn't give that because he gave us a handball for our penalty, which subsequently we missed. But, you know, the look of the dice is going to be with you at times, it's not going to be with you at times. Today, I think Villa got away with one because I don't think, I, I just don't, I do not think that it was, it was kind of a goal. I think it should have been handball. I think that... It was a clear handball by Gested, but at the same time, I think the Villa should have had a penalty for Hoof's kind of claw round the face. Now, it might seem like a bit of a rant this video because I've been critical of players and not really talked about our performance, but I thought we were poor. I thought we were poor, but who am I to criticise when we're really high up in the league? We're top of the league now, obviously, with this point takes us to the top of the league, so things could be a lot, lot worse. We could be Villa, we could be on 12 points, and that would be a lot worse a position to be in, but it just frustrates me because the games there for taking, they're the games I want us to win, to show that we are top four candidates. West Ham losing to Newcastle today is a big one for us, obviously moved us further, clear of them in fifth. We want Liverpool to beat Man United tomorrow, so that gap stays the same. And then we just need to keep up picking these results. We've got a few big home games coming up. Obviously, we've got Stoke. Stoke's a big home game if we can get a big win there. Then we move on. But maybe we have rode this bad form now. We've got through this bad run of form. And we've survived, basically. We've survived this bad run of form. I hope it doesn't last any longer for people like Mares and people like Drinkwater and Albrighton because they have been poor for a few weeks. And I think we all have to realise that and say that we've not been at our best despite getting results. We haven't looked good. Ujo hasn't looked good when he came on today losing the ball and there were a few players who were well well below the level but as I've said multiple times in this video I'm sure you're all bored of hearing it but we're still top of the league so if that continues to the end of the season and we end up still top of the league then I'll bite your hand off for it but hopefully hopefully we start putting in better performances next week at Stoke for my player ratings they're going to be down in the comment section I've left my player ratings down in the comments it'll be the first comment hopefully so tell me what you think to them, reply to them, leave what you thought about the game in the comments section. Please like the video as always, 
and please, please subscribe to my channel so you never miss a video about Leicester or anything Leicester related. Hopefully there'll be a transfer video next week about Daniel Amati joining from Copenhagen. I'm going to try and get someone in who's a Copenhagen fan to talk about him and what he might offer to the club. And also we'll obviously have stuff about the Stoke game next week. But for now, it's a disappointing point at Villa in the end, but it's a point that takes us back top of the table. We are Leicester City. We always keep the faith. We never die. We never say die. We never quit. Let's keep going. Stoke next. Come on, you foxes.